Think of your favourite band, their best album. Chances are it was recorded at Sound City. Hidden away in a nondescript building in the Van Noyes neighbourhood of Los Angeles, it is one of the most iconic studios in modern music history. This video is brought to you by Universal Audio. Since it opened in 1969, Sound City Studios has been the birthplace of more than 100 certified gold and platinum albums. Neil Young, Fleetwood Mac, Tom Petty, Pat Benatar, Nirvana, Rage Against the Machine, Tool, Slayer, Weezer, Johnny Cash, Queens of the Stone Age, Slipknot, Kings of Leon, Arctic Monkeys. I could fill this entire video just listing some of the incredible names that have recorded there. Now I'm excited to show you the brand new UAD Sound City Studios plugin. This has been a labour of love for the team at Universal Audio, where they've captured Sound City's famous Studio A and now made this, which lets us place our own music inside the legendary space using historically accurate microphone setups. It's an intuitive, foolproof tool for songwriters making demos like me, but deep enough for mixing and production experts. So what's the secret to its success? What's created this unique chemistry that's pushed artists for the past six decades to make their best work? Some say it's the shape of the room. Sound City, that's it, man. That room really did sound just incredible. Legend has it that no one's dared paint the walls or put new lino down on the floor lest they upset the magic formula. Others say it's the Neve 8028 console, one of only four in the world. That board, that room, that is Sound City. Whatever the reason, artists and producers all agree that Sound City's unique sound is one of a kind special. Rick Rubin, a longtime visitor, has said that guitars sound pretty much the same everywhere, but drums change from room to room, and the sound at Sound City was among the best. Okay, so I'm working on songs for my next record and want to show you how easy it is to use by starting with an existing demo. You'll notice two modes, reverb and remic. These are important. Reverb works with existing recordings, so yes, you can use the plugin in a traditional workflow using send return paths mixed with dry signals. Only the halo of the studio's early reflections and decay are heard, which is where I start with my vocal and acoustic take. No, I need to stay away I've gotten all confused You tell me there aren't feelings How am I feeling so used? I will write a character A fictional you That you live in my head rent free A room with the perfect view but I want to translate this song to full band, so I need to simplify the guitar part and find a groove with drums and bass guitar. So remic is where the magic really is. This is full immersion into the studio from home using the microphone and interface I already have. Remic mode replaces my recordings with Sound City's complete room and microphone characteristics. For example, I'm DIing the guitars simply doubling the part, keeping them clean and clear, but I want to put them in two different spaces and pan them either side. So they go from this to this. My drums, yep, they're MIDI. This is how they sound without the room. This is how they sound in the room. So my DI'd bass guitar is sounding a little thin. Again, no problem. It'll go from this to this. So what I'm doing here is taking my bass guitar and blasting the room with back in the day style remiking using vintage speakers. Now the band is finding its groove and it's just making my demo have energy that I haven't been able to find before in just one plugin.
time for a little history. Originally built as a production factory for Vox Amps, Sound City opened as a recording studio in 1969 under the ownership of Tom Skeeter and Joe Gottfried, two music industry pros looking to start a label. Lacking deep pockets, the pair ran the studio on a shoestring with no luxuries. It was the kind of place you could put a cigarette out on the carpet and no one would mind. It didn't take long before they could claim their first masterpiece, Neil Young's After the Gold Rush, with Young recording the track Birds there in 1970. Something about Sound City deemed destined for the history books. A few years later, in 1973, Lindsay Buckingham and Stevie Nicks, two friends from Menlo Atherton High School in Atherton, California, moved to Los Angeles to make it in the music business. They recorded an album, Buckingham Nicks, that was heard by almost no one, except for one very important listener. Mick Fleetwood, scouting out recording studios, heard their track Frozen Love played back through Sound City's monitors by producer Keith Olsen and invited them to join his band. This twist of fate led to the formation of one of history's most iconic groups and best-selling albums. Fleetwood Mac returned to Sound City in 1975 to record their second eponymous album, also known as the White Album, and again the next year to lay down Never Going Back Again for what would be their next record, Rumours. In 1973, desperately looking for a way to make their business a success, Skeeter and Gottfried took out a loan and paid $75,000, over half a million dollars in today's money, for what turned out to be their greatest investment, a Neve 8028 console. Back to the plug-in. Not only can I easily swap sources, change microphones, polar patterns, explore the presets, saving my favorites along the way, but I know that the plug-in is infusing my music with the original console's natural filtering, whilst also giving me these stunning mixer view controls. There's so much attention to detail with the master effects view. We have this three band EQ, and then this dynamics module with six types of compressors that if you do want more information on this, there is a link in the description below. This section gets deep. Last but not least, in my favorite module and a lesser known aspect of Sound City, we have the reverb chamber. And that is where I'm going to be placing my vocals, taking them from this to find security and uncertainty to this. There's something in the way you talk. There's something in the way with the addition of the Neve 8028, the work at Sound City started to pick up. In 1977, The Grateful Dead recorded their album Terrapin Station with producer Keith Olsen, who had a novel approach to making sure that the band hit their deadline. During the cutting of the basic tracks, it was pretty hard to get every member of the band in the studio at the same time. So Steve Parrish went out to the hardware store and got these giant nails and a great big hammer. And as soon as everybody was in, he hammered the door shut from the inside. We didn't have drifters from the other studios coming in to listen. We didn't have people leaving to go screw around elsewhere. We started getting work done. Other hits followed. Ario Speedwagons, you can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. Cheap Tricks, Heaven Tonight, and Tom Petty's breakthrough album, Damn the Torpedoes. Tom would record at Sound City for the next two decades. Rick Rubin also fell in love with the space, recording there with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Slayer, System of a Down, Johnny Cash, and Metallica. And then in 1991, armed with a budget of $65,000, Nirvana and producer Butch Vig came together to record the band's second album, Nevermind, a record that perhaps more than any other would define music in the 1990s, give voice to the disaffected and unite a generation. But despite its many successes, the studio couldn't keep up with the passage of time as digital recording techniques became increasingly popular. It struggled financially and closed to the public in 2011, auctioning off its equipment. The Neve 8028 found a new home with Dave Grohl, who made an acclaimed film about the history of the studio. So this recording console, this is a Neve 8028 from the early 70s. Mm. This is the board that I bought from Sound City, uh, the studio here in the San Fernando Valley that I made a documentary about. It felt like an important chapter in American recording history might be coming to a close. But in early 2017, Sandy Skeeter, the daughter of founder Tom Skeeter, and studio operator Olivier Chastan partnered together to reopen the studio, filling it with a mix of vintage analog equipment and modern digital technology, including two Helios recording consoles. There's so much more to Sound City than its history because its iconic sound lives on. Every time a listener discovers one of those records, hears those drums and guitars for the first time. And now the fact that you and I can transport our music into the room is just mind blowing.
Universal Audio have yet again given us something with unparalleled attention to detail and quality, and I'm just so honoured that they asked me to be part of this launch. Be sure to check out the link in the description, and of course, I'll be seeing you here again very soon. I know I need to stay away I've gotten all confused You tell me there aren't feelings